So for this technique, I'm going to start off by outlining my design flat using one of these peelable outliners. If you're not sure whether your outliner will peel or not, you can always test a, a little strip and see if it does. This technique won't work for every type of design, but luckily it's better for the busy type of designs with lots of lines, not so much for ones with huge gaps in them. Okay, let's look at the equipment we'll need. So what I need to start this technique, this is a file holder, comes out of a, a clip file, uh, you can buy them in the shops, have loads around, it's a smooth variety and totally clear. You can feel how smooth that is. Also need something to stiffen that with and I'm going to use a piece of clear perspex. You can use cardboard, doesn't matter what, that goes in there. And then finally, you're going to need your design. These some very old designs I have around, hence it being in black. Normally I have all my designs in green, but it's black and this is the particular design I intend to do and I will slip that on top of the perspex but in the folder there. There we go. There's our design and now all I need to do is pipe that in the normal way. If you haven't piped before don't worry we have lots of videos on how to pipe on the site. I will leave out, leave off the outer circle, I don't want that, I just want these roses in the middle. Now I have done that, I'll take that and put it upside so you can see, and there you can see I have piped to the design. Now I've made sure the outliner I've used is peelable, that's very important. A lot of outliners are peelable, um, I, this is gallery glass. You can test your outliner and see if it will peel. Don't worry, it's not going to come off your finished item because when you paint this with glass paints, that will seal it onto your object. But at the moment it's peelable, so very carefully, I'm going to just peel the outliner and take it off the backing file. It's really important at this stage that you turn your finished outline piece over so the sticky side is facing upwards. Don't worry if you tear the odd bit, I've managed not to, but if you do tear one bit then, then don't worry because it will still work. So I want the single rows at the top, double rows at the, rows at the bottom like that put it underneath so you can see. So I've done that very carefully and now it's simply a matter make sure it's all down flat make sure it's where I want it and there we are it's onto the object and now I can paint that in the normal method of painting 3D objects. Again, if you haven't painted a 3D object before, we do have videos on that. But I will do this and come back and show you the finished piece. So here's the finished item. I hope you can see that okay. I've painted it using the 3D painting techniques described in our 3D the painting techniques video. Um, if you're interested, the colours I used were Pebio Vitrol colours, uh, uh, crimson and orange in the middle, um, green obviously, and a touch of lemon yellow in the leaves. 
Okay, I hope you find this technique useful. I say the busier the design, the easier it is. Um, designs with huge gaps in are quite difficult. Have a go, see what you think.